What's going on my broskies? My name is Totski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're here to talk about Arena Kawamatsu. Finally we get some new content to actually play like it's been like a week and a half of absolutely nothing so I'm really happy that we finally have something to do. So in this video obviously we're going through Arena Kawamatsu giving you guys the breakdown of what you should be expecting in this fight for the 50 stamina difficulty 11 star difficulty but before we get into that let's talk about what this character actually does. What is this brand new free to play unit? actually do that we're all going to be farming for now obviously i do not have mine maxed just yet i should have him maxed sometime today but kawamatsu is a strength free spirit slasher with a captain effect of boosting those two types by three times with the 1.2 health boost and recovery in tandem are beneficial to those classes as well not an amazing captain ability special ability though is pretty interesting uh, if I could actually click the right one, which will go ahead and reduce paralysis and attack down by three turns, which is okay. It would have been nice if it was four or five turns, but you know, three turns is still usable. He also deals a hundred times his attack and strength damage to all enemies, which is pretty good. Um, he also changes empty block bomb into matching, uh, but of course he does damage, which means you can have the Akanu support for a bull full board of strength slots if you're running a team like that. Uh, he also will lock your slots for one turn, which is pretty nice as well. Um, he also will boost free spirit and slasher characters attack by one 1.75 times for one turn and then he has the clock buff which says after two turns the clock will disappear and give you a two times orb boost to free spirit and slasher once that clock buff has gone so you can get multiple different turns of boost with him plus he has the ability to lock those slots so you can carry matching slots and boosts over two different stages plus he has the added utility right so there's a lot to like about this unit i don't think he's a perfect free to play unit but definitely not a terrible unit by any stretch Crewmate effects will make uh, free spirit and slasher characters get 50 attack. And if he has a strength slot, he keeps it if you hit a perfect. Um, I do not have all of his abilities maxed because he's not max limit break yet. But I believe his third ability is in rage. So nothing really too noteworthy there. But something else that is actually noteworthy is his support effect, which attaches to Raizo, Okiku, and Odin. And it says that if the character uses their special, you reduce two turns of paralysis. So this is good for Odin because Odin doesn't really have that many good supports from the get go. So it's kind of nice that we are getting a little bit more support for him now. But um, that's pretty much it for the breakdown of uh, Kawamatsu. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the breakdown of the Kawamatsu Arena. So jumping into things, of course, we have four different teams for you guys that takes on this particular piece of content. You can go down below on the video timeline or in the video description to time skip to in any individual team that you want to see. But uh, first of all, we have the versus Akainu team. So this is utilizing the Jozu and the Sengoku from the batch. And we also have got Quickbeard and Limited Rare Recruit Marco. Marco completely not required for this team. Uh, the White Beard's very good though, removing Despair, giving us an attack boost. Really, really strong unit, of course. But uh, you saw stage three there, Okiku. Now, Okiku has two points. 4 million health if you're using a friend captain akainu or your own akainu the ignition effect that gets inflicted to okiku will immediately kill okiku in two turns so you actually don't even need to attack at all but you know obviously i would suggest bringing a friend captain akainu it definitely makes this particular fight a lot easier um and then we've got stage four against Rizo. now the one in the middle has 10 million health and then the two guys in the back row have 800,000, and they have a delay immunity and a poison immunity and they give you normal attacks only and they've got five turns of rainbow shield and your right side is binded for eight turns which is where sengoku comes in super clutch for removing the rainbow shield and also removing the bind but if you don't kill either of them they're going to keep summoning back the little guys so you have to be very very careful definitely take on the middle guy first because he having 10 million health is a bit of a problem and then they have uh, kawamatsu on the final stage which has 55 million health with uh, a preemptive of full immunity he also will give you normal attacks only as well and he gives your friend captain only nine turns of despair which is annoying it means that the friend captain akainu cannot give you burn the ignition effect but because your other captain is not despaired it means you actually if you have your own akainu you can uh, inflict him with the ignition effect but also you're inflicted with attack down by four turns six turns of chain coefficient reduction which is where akainu's chain lock is very good and you hit with special reverse which is where the rare recruit jose is good because he gets rid of some of the despair spare the attack down and he gives you the special reverse for your fighter and powerhouse characters which is good he removes your beneficial effects when you enter this stage as well so you can't bring multi-turn buffs in and he gives you a full board of block orbs as well um, but the thing about him is that there's no interrupts at all which makes it pretty easy to take him down The second team of this video is going to be utilizing V2 Kaido as the captain. So this is like in a hypothetical situation. If you had Kaido, but you didn't have any of the new batch and you don't have a Kainu, um, you can use a friend captain, a Kainu, to get 
through this stage without too many issues here. So, um, just speaking about some of these units here, we have the Colosseum uh, Okiku on this team, who is really good because uh, we can use the Okiku special on stage 4, which gets rid of 5 turns of Rainbow Shield, and it gets rid of the Bind on our team too. Plus, it actually gives us a uh, an orb boost as well, right? And we have the Kaido special as well against stage 4, which will give us the ability to get a full board of matching slots, as well as giving the enemy increased damage taken. So, it's essentially getting a 2 times boost against him, which is really good, right? Um, and with all of that alone, just with the Okiku special, and we also use Kaido special, and then we have the super type as well, making sure our quick units do a bit more damage. Unfortunately, normal attacks only being inflicted on this stage is a bit of a problem, um, because it means that Kaido is special and his super type don't do that much damage at all. But if you were able to do that, it makes the stage so much easier. But even without that, we are still able to get through this stage very, very easily. And then on the final stage, of course, we have to deal with the special reverse, which is where the rare recruit speed is great because it reduces the cooldowns of our powerhouse. I think it's no, I think it's actually all characters, not just powerhouse units. So speed's really good because we get type advantage with speed. It's a powerhouse unit, and uh, it just works out really well, right? Uh, we have the um, what's her face, uh, Lin Lin, the Charlotte Lin Lin, which gives us an attack boost to our powerhouse characters and driven characters. It also gets rid of the despair and it gets rid of the attack down. So like this ambush Lin Lin is so so good for this stage. We have the um, Legend Cracker, which is not completely required, but it gives us a color affinity boost against him as well. And with the Akainu special, of course, we get the full board matching slots, the orb boost, and the chain lock. And surprisingly enough, it is way more than enough damage in order to actually get this job done which is great um, so even though not a full team of quick units it doesn't really matter because of ambush Lin, Lin you know you have to hit 12 hits before you are able to get that attack boost anyway so because we have two units on our team that aren't even quick in the first place it actually doesn't make that much of a difference um, that we don't have a full quick team basically so very very powerful team that was able to get the job done against Kawamatsu would have been nice if we could have launched the versus effect as well to actually get the conditional boost but still a really good team either way Moving on now to the third team of the video, which is going to be utilizing Goldie Roger. Man, I love using Goldie Roger. Definitely still probably my favorite legend in the game. He's just ridiculously powerful. But this team is pretty awesome because we are using this special rare recruit ace. Now, this ace came out, I believe it was with the release of Luffy and Law. And I mean, since his release, I haven't really used him, but he fits so perfectly on this team because not only does he proc the super type of Roger, but uh, he, he's really great for getting around the special reverse in the final stage of the fight. Plus, we get a three times chain lock off of him as well. Um, but when you launch his special, despite all of those great things that you get, he binds himself for five turns, I believe it is. Um, which obviously sucks. It means you don't get an attack off with that ace character. But luckily, we also have the rare recruit Kaku, which is going to be very useful for getting rid of the attack down on the final stage but it also gets rid of bind. So we can use Ace first for the special reverse and the chain lock. And then because Ace is binded, we'll use Kaku to get rid of the bind that Ace inflicted on himself. Plus the attack down as well, which is great. We've got the Kuzan, which will give an orb boost and a color affinity boost to our quick units on our team. We're using the rare recruit Sengoku again, just because of his amazing usability here on the, on the riser stage. But another really good thing here is Roger, right? Because you can use his super type to get a full water matching slot over two separate stages, but you can use his special as well, which obviously gives you a three times attack boost, but it also just will outright KO the back Rhizo characters, which means you can focus all of your damage off on the main Rhizo, which definitely makes this stage super, super easy. But then when you reach the final stage, you just launch everything and you're good to go. As long as Ace is launched first, which it 100% should be, um, you have absolutely no problems getting through this stage at all. Definitely an impressive team if you don't have some of the more recently released characters. Um, even though Sengoku is on this team, you could likely replace him with the uh, Colosseum Okiku, which you saw in the previous team. That actually should still work um, without too many hitches. Oh, 
And now moving on to the final team of the video, which we're using a Sugo Fest exclusive that I have not used, oh man, on such a long time, I have not used this character on an actual team, which is Legend Smoker, man. Like, I've used him as a support in, in quite a few cases, but definitely not as a actual captain, which is interesting enough. But Kuzan makes another appearance here. He is so, so good, giving, you know, the orb boost and the color affinity boost to our quick units. Having barrier penetration on this stage versus Okiku makes clearing this stage pretty easy. We've also got Shirohoshi and Mancherry, and, you know, I know not too many people are going to likely have Shirohoshi Mancherry V2, but uh, you definitely don't need that character on the team. You can just replace it with any other major despair remover, um, is what I would advise. Um, but the really good thing about this unit is it allows us to get, like, basically a full board of matching orbs, right, um, on the final stage. Which you guys will see how we're how we're getting that. Um, Gukimaru is really good here as well because it gets rid of four turns of bind and four turns of the rainbow shield. We do have some key supports on our team though. We have Whitey Bay attached to Gukimaru, which will outright remove the additional turn of bind that we need to get rid of. And we also have brand new rare recruit brand new support attached to Sengoku, which means that when we actually use Sengoku's um, tap attack, if we hit a perfect, it removes one turn of rainbow shield, which is the last rainbow shield turn that we need to remove because unfortunately Gukimaru only removes four turns not five turns so by hitting with Sengoku first we can remove that rainbow shield and then just outright target the rest of the guys in the back and uh and then just kill off the uh, the risos as we go here um as we see the riser stays alive so he summons more clones but these clones only have 800,000 hp so you don't have to worry about it too much i was a little bit scared that they were going to like revive back another 10 million hp riso but you didn't have to worry about that and of course on the final stage we have to stall one turn to get rid of the block orbs unfortunately but then once the block orbs are removed we can just launch all of our specials and we get the easy dub so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today and if you guys did enjoy it make sure you go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that i post on my channel including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video